This is Eric, the Cocos Evangelist. The last video is about adding game state logic, but it's not over. Today's video will finish this part. In the last video, we've done the prep works, but we haven't done the state switching part. The first time to switch states is when we click on the play button. So we define an interface here, which is called when the play button is clicked. We start switching state from here. Once the state is switched, you need to click the button to execute this interface. Find this button node, which has a button component on it and an event property on the component. It's an array that can accept multiple listeners. Register this event. The first parameter received by the event is the target of the event to be called back. The target object is game manager and the component it will call is the game manager component. And the last interface it will execute is on the start button clicked. We can call this function interface a callback function. In all cases like the click event where a function is passed in so that it can be called at the right time to accomplish the target task, this function is called a callback function. The callback doesn't need parameters, you just need to trigger the callback. Next, since there are multiple states to be switched, each with different content to handle, we better handle state switching in a unified method. I define a set method here to determine what should be handled. In the initialization state, the game in progress state and the game over state respectively. Since it should have a default state, we can make the initialization state the default state. Let it generate the road at the initialization state, so that it doesn't need to generate the road in start, but only need to switch the state to the initialization state. Next, switch the button clicked state to the game in progress state. In the game in progress state, the first action that needs to be performed is to close the menu in the main screen. In other words, to deactivate it. Then allow receiving user actions. This is an interface function that we defined in player controller earlier. It's time to verify the whole logic of the start of the game. Run it. Instead of clicking play, Click somewhere else first. You see the character is unable to move. Then click play. And you will see that the character moves one grid after clicking play, right? This is because the code was executed immediately when the play button was clicked. Allowing the user action to be received. The click event is executed immediately when the mouse is down. And at this point the mouse is not up yet. So the logic to allow receiving user actions has already been executed. When the mouse is up again, it will execute the logic code for character movement. So we set a delay here of 0.1 seconds. This code will be executed after a delay of 0.1 seconds. Let's take a look. Click play. This time the character movement is not performed immediately. Oops, but the animation doesn't play either. Let's find out why. Because the animation is not associated. My bad, I forgot to save the scene again, so the data is lost. Let's take a look again. Now the animation is back. After finishing the beginning part of the game, it's time for the end part. There are two ways to end the game. One is the character jumped into the pit. The other is the character jumped to the finish line. And what condition should be used to determine the two ways? You may remember that when we first generated the road, there was a road array which stores all types of the current rows. We will use this type to determine whether the character is stepping on the road or a pit. 
The most important point here is to get the grid on which the character is currently located. We start with the player controller. Define a variable called current move indexed here, which is the number of grid the character has jumped to. Each time the character jumps, the number will be recorded and added up here. Later, at the end of the jump, the game manager should be notified to update the game state. Since we declared a property associated with the player controller in the game manager, the player controller can notify the game manager of the updated state by messages. We let the hero know the dispatch and end of jump event, and the parameter of the event is the number of grid the character currently jumped to. In addition to system events, the most commonly used events are usually node events, which are listened to and dispatched through the node. Then we listen in the game manager. You'll find that it can't call on because listening must be done with nodes. You should enter play control node on. Then enter the event name. Call back. Then we define a callback function. The callback function needs to receive a parameter, which is the number of steps the character has currently moved. Then we define another function to do the result detection, receiving the same parameters. And we perform the result detection here. To determine whether it has not yet reached the end. If it hasn't reached the end, determine whether the character is currently stepping on the pit. If it's a pit, then the game is over. Back to the initial state of the game. If it's not a pit, then the game continues. If it reaches the end, the game also ends and returns to the initial state. If the game goes back to the initial state, it needs to bring up the main screen again and disable user actions. Back to the state judgment here. In the default state, create a road. Meanwhile, activate the main menu and prevent the user from controlling the character movement. Take a look. Oops, this time the character position is not reset. This part of logic still needs some refinement. There are two things to add here. One is the position reset. The other is the step reset. Let's write the position reset first. Take a look at the initial position of the character. OK. And how do we reset the step count? Since there is no open interface to reset, let's define one. It's called reset. When reset is called, the step count will be reset. OK, take a look. This time, the runway is not refreshed when restarting. Let's check the logic. The rows are generated after the restart, but the new rows are added directly after the old runway without clearing the previous data. Clear the data here. Also, the already generated rows needs to be removed. Since the road is added as a child of the game manager node after it is generated, we should remove the useless road nodes and generate new ones. Take a look. Now the runway is different every time. OK, this part of the logic looks fine. Finally, organize the code and put this part of the logic in the initialization function. 
to make the code more concise. Also, this current state with underscore is no longer useful, so just delete it. The other one is is moving, which was previously used to determine that if the jump is not finished, then it will not continue to receive responses from the user. But this parameter is actually similar with start jump, so it can be removed as well. Just use start jump to determine it. Delete all the parts with is moving. OK. The state logic of the game is finished. In fact, all the logic parts are now complete. The next video will do a little closing, adding some lighting shadow effects. Oh, there is still a game state that is not determined. Now when the game ends, it will go straight back to the initialization state. In fact, Generally, when a game ends, an end-level screen will pop up. If the character jumps into the pit, a screen will pop up asking you whether to resurrect. I'm not going to write this part this time. I'll leave it for you as homework. I will explain the logic of this part at the end of the next video. That's all for today. Remember to subscribe if you find this video helpful. Thank you.